in order to have a science teacher in our elementary school this year, each student has been asked to bring in a body part. <laughs> And they're going to assemble it, and he, she, or it will be the science teacher. Very, very when Paula Poundstone gets rolling, nothing and no one is safe. She'll take on politics, parenthood, just about anything else that strikes her fancy, and she'll do it on stage, on radio, on TV, even on Twitter. Paula Poundstone is in town this week for a taping of NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So you're on public radio. I, Wait, don't tell me. Public radio show. I'm on public radio. Did you ever think you'd be doing comedy on public radio? So no. Normally stayed? Honestly, yes. I never, I never did. In fact, as a child, if my father turned the radio to public radio, I got upset. I was like, no, not that. That's what my kids do. Yeah, my kids are like that. Now, not, my, not my older, but my son. Just, you know, he says it gives him a headache. Does he listen to you? <laughs> do they... No, he doesn't really care about me on the radio. He, he doesn't, it, it, it doesn't impress him at all. And I've worked hard to impress my children. I have yet to. Does anything impress them? Not really. No, not that's really. just they, being they a don't kid. Care. They, they don't, don't care. care. I tell my kids all the time, I go, you know, I am part of America's pop culture. And they go, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> so they just see you as mom. It's, yeah, yeah, and even that, you know. <laughs> even that <laughs> they don't care about, by the way, yeah. I think it's because they, t they see me doing too much manual labor. Oh, yeah. dishes, cleaning up yeah, after them. Yeah, we have 16 cats. S one six? 16? 16, yeah. So there's a tremendous amount oh of manual gosh. labor involved yeah. in that. Yeah, that's a lot of litter. Yeah, it's a tremendous amount of litter. And so, yeah, so they see me doing, you know, unseemly, uh, you know, and then, and so then you try to tell them I'm, you know, part of America's pop culture. And, and they're like, no, and, she and cleans I'm, the litter box. The truth box. is, you and I both know I'm not really part of America's pop culture, but I think that they should well, believe not? it. Yeah. I sure. think you are. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I am the closest to that of anybody at our kitchen table. Let me just say that. Right, and yeah. does that include the cats? That does include, well, although we have a 24-hour webcam uh, on our cat's food and water bowls. Oh. So my cat, Luigi, <laughs> is kind of getting a little following. <laughs> yeah, and my, uh, Gordon, who works for me, he lit the, we use a, a, a clear baking dish for the water bowl, and he lit it from underneath. And so you do get. Do you see the tongue? You get a beautiful. Lapping? You get a beautiful shot. A lap shot. As I'm saying that, like the crew here is probably going to want to come take a look at the setup that we have. <laughs> it's LED, so it's not using a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should do that here. Yeah. We should have a. You guys got a nice thing going on here. Lap, lapping. Beautiful view of, of Burbank. Yeah. Which you don't really get from the ground. Jay Leno across the street. A beautiful view of Jay Leno. <laughs> well, that's something. Yeah. Well, okay, let's talk about your comedy. And yeah. you do a lot of political comedy. Are you kind of bummed that the campaign is over? No. There's so much material. No. I, I've done a lot of interviews where people say to me, you know, what's fun? Is it funny? Are the, aren't the elections funny? And I, I really, honestly, because this time it took on a they shoot horses, don't they quality, you know, this like endless marathon of no, don't stop, don't stop. Yeah. Uh, the primary to me was very entertaining. And after the primary, honestly. Because you had Herman Cain, you had Newt Gingrich. It was fantastic. Fantastic, and they all ha you know, normally like in a primary. You, you know, there's some people who never get any, never kind of see the light of day, and they just sort of die away, and you never really remember who they're. This one, every one of those Republican primary candidates, uh, with the exception of Huntsman, every one of them had like a, a, you know, a couple of days at least, sometimes a week, two weeks, where you went, okay, all right, it's gonna be, that's gonna be the nominee, and they <laughs> yeah. felt it in their face, yeah. you know, and th it was like watching, watching the Republican field was like watching a front-loading dryer. It would, they'd be up there, you know, they're, oh, it's gonna be him, and then uh, like some sweatshirt and, and jeans would like knock them off, and vroom, <laughs> down they'd go. Yeah, so that was fun. But then you have Mitt Romney talking about binders full of women, dog on the roof, I mean, yeah, some yeah. Oh, there were some, there, yeah. but by, by that time, by the time it was just him and Obama, it was just, it was just so grueling. It was just so, yeah. you know, and the thing is, I have three kids, so I'm used to being lied to, and I find it exhausting. I just find it exhausting. The idea that they would have a debate 
And then, like, right away, you had to go check with the fact checkers. Yeah. And there's something wrong there. You, you know what I mean? And at a point to me, that was not a joyous experience. I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, whatever. But And there was no colorful character like Sarah Palin, too. Well, no, I really... To mine. It, it's true. And who knew we would miss Sarah Palin? But I did kind of miss Sarah Palin. Well, yeah. how do you make comedy out of President Obama? He is notoriously not good material for comics. Um, no, I guess he isn't. I, you know, I, I guess he is. I don't I mean, I don't feel the need to. You know, my, uh, I don't consider myself a political comic so much as I am, you know, an adult. Uh, and and that I would like to be a part of protecting our democracy. And therefore, I try to inform myself and, and cast a halfway decent vote. And so only, you know, that's the amount of my politics. Do you, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not a historian. I'm not a political analyst. I don't know all the history or the this or the that. I really am just trying to inform myself well yeah. enough to cast a halfway decent vote, which is not easy to do because I'm a single working mom with three kids, 16 cats, two German Shepherd mixed dogs, a bearded <laughs> dragon lizard, a lot beard bunny, and one ant left from my ant farm. So it's not, you know, you know, when Jay Leno yeah. does this thing where he goes out in the street and he asks people, you know, who's their congressman or who's their this or who's their that, and, and they don't know, and it's like, oh, isn't that funny, and oh, aren't they idiots? You know what? No. A, it's not funny, and B, I don't mean Jay, I mean just that idea that we're not informed, but B, the truth is, it's not that easy to be informed if yeah. you have... Right, if you have a busy life full of animals. It, it full of, you know, just my knowledge of what's going on in the world. And, and wait, wait, don't tell me, by the way, I hold the record for losses. Uh, and I, I say that with a little bit of pride, quite honestly. Because what it means is I'm very busy. That's what it means. I don't have, I don't get every single news story. That's true. I don't absolutely know every single thing. Plus, I'm Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which is a weekly news quiz show on yeah. NPR for those who don't know. Um, you know, no one ever talks about the cheating. The cheating? The steroids. No one ever, the, yeah. You're, I'm going public with are it. Are you saying but yeah, you... there is some underhanded. Really? Yeah. It, I didn't know there was steroids for comedy. For Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. There, there is, is, yeah, there are, just for yeah, there are enhancers, you know. Uh, I don't yet have my hands on any of the syringes, but if I do, I'm holding on to them, because uh -huh. I know there's going to be court case years you know from Carl Castle's going to come after you for this. Carl Castle, one of the biggest abusers. <laughs> well, do you have to really keep up on the news, being on Wait, Wait? I mean, I, well, I try you to, to be but quick as I said, have you know, your responses to the current uh, events. Well, yeah, and I do, and I don't. Ye uh, years ago, we had a um, ten-year anniversary celebration for the show, and it was lovely. And we, you know, we all came together. And the truth is, there's only three panelists per show, and so we've never all been in the same room at the same time. So it was sort of joyous in that regard. And and the producer, we had a little dinner together, and the producers were reading to us. Uh, we were at these circle tables. There's a couple circle tables. And the producers were reading to us by way of entertaining some stats about the show. You know, uh, how many radio stations bought it in the beginning and how many buy it now. And it's grown in popularity, so that was fun to hear. And uh, they read a bunch of stats. And one of the stats was, you know, how many times has someone got none right, zero correct, in the lightning round? Uh -huh. And, uh, man, I'm looking around my table thinking, what poor idiot. That must have been <laughs> awful. And it turned out that the answer was only one time, and it was me. And the saddest part of the story is apparently it was about two weeks before that dinner. So if that had been a question in my lightning round, even though it was about me and my own personal experience, would've, I, would've I would have gotten, gotten it wrong. wrong. Yeah. In that special way that I have. I think you need your steroids. I am the village idiot of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, and not by design. It just sort of worked out that way. How much of it is scripted versus just you off the cuff coming up with something? None is scripted for the panelists. Well, I shouldn't say none. Uh, there's a little section called Bluff the Listener where there's a story, three stories are read. Uh, one is a true story, a little news, uh -huh. quirky news story, yeah. and, and uh, two of them are made up. And so we write that ahead of time. And then also the very last thing they say, they always go, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how they get to it, but it's this prediction. And we make some prediction about something coming up. Right. And uh, in the topic of the pre prediction, we're told just about the time we're going out on stage. And then Carl goes, well, panel, if any of those things happen, we'll talk about them next week. Uh -huh. Don't wait, wait, don't tell me. So that, those are the only two things. And other than that, I mean, you know it's based on the week's news. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you want to go to the trouble of crafting jokes based on the week's news, you could. And I never the, have. Yeah. Do you know why I never have, Marlon? Because I'm busy. And I thought we went over that. <laughs> you, 
I don't have time for that. You know, apparently, Peter Zagel is not sifting cat waste. He's got a wife and kids, and, and yeah. I think they're doing a lot of the domestic stuff, honestly. Yeah, and Me, maybe he doesn't have a 24-hour cam. I don't think he does in have a 24 hour uh, that he needs uh, to maintain camera. and make sure the cats are ready and exactly and for are their and, and have their that's makeup a, that's on. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think he's doing a lot of the same stuff that I'm doing, I'll be honest. He's a really brilliant, funny man. But when we talk, we don't seem to have that much in common. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he doesn't really Peter, know from. He doesn't know from. Yeah. What you deal like with. his hands are not calloused. <laughs> I have a callus from sifting litter boxes. And have I showed it to Peter once. To I said, where's yours? And he didn't even know what I was talking about. Maybe, have you thought of downsizing? What, with the 16 cats? Yeah. I thought you meant the kids. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? There are so many acceptable behaviors, itself. but They'll it hasn't eventually come to move that. Out, right? Well, that's what they say. Yeah. That's the story yeah. of her. But cats, they, live, can, they can live forever. No, cats do not live forever. Who told you? A dog person told you that, right? Because dog people like to spread the seeds of, like, no cat. And I, by the way, am not a cat person, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I have 16 cats, but I also have two German Shepherd mixed dogs. Now, if you have 16 cats, then you are considered a crazy cat lady. But if you have 16 cats and two German Shepherd mixed dogs, not to mention a bearded dragon lizard, a lot bearded bunny, and one ant left from my ant farm, then you're considered an animal lover. Oh. Yeah. So the truth so is... So not insane. No, not at all. Okay. Just a person Just who's a, one with a nature. Lover of so animals, my yeah. uh, German Shepherds really are beards. <laughs> Cat beards. I brought them in just to cover for the fact that I have a massive animal hoarding problem right now that I can't seem to get under control. Okay, well, I'll let you go back. I know you've got a lot of work to do to I've clean the litter. I've got the callus right yep. here to show you've it. You've got litter I mean, to clean. Yeah, I've, got stuff to, I've got stuff to do, which is why I can barely keep up on what's going on in the world. Paul Panstone, thanks for coming in. It was so nice talking with you.